Okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Taisuke Woku from University of Tsukuba. I'm a deputy director of the Center for Computational Sciences in the University of Tsukuba. So today i like to give some talk about um, our experience and uh, uh, some observation about the, uh, the big large-scale GPU cluster, which is under operation by the PBS Pro Scheduler. And at first, thank you very much for inviting me to and give the, the, the opportunity to give this talk. Okay, uh, this is at the end of my talk, but I just um, like to skip it. And it's um, basically uh, my talk is following this agenda. So first of all, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, briefly about um, our center. So the, our center is named as uh, CCS, or that stands for Center for Computational Sciences, University of Tsukuba. And uh, it was um, established as a former organization named the Center for Computational, sorry, Center for Computational Physics. And after the 12 years of the, uh, uh, the work, uh, it is uh, reorganized as a center for computational sciences. So as you see, that uh, first we are, our target was uh, physics, but uh, it's expanded to the whole range of the uh, computational sciences. And as you know, the computational science is uh, one of the most uh, hot uh, topic in the uh, a sort of the third kind of science. The first science is the theory, and the second science is uh, observation and uh, uh, experiment. And the third one is a computation. So today we need a very large scale uh, HPC resources to do this computational science. And this center is exactly established for the, uh, as uh, some uh, con con uh, concentrated uh, organization to perform um, many kinds of the computational sciences. So here, oh, sorry. Um, if you are familiar to the Tokyo area, so you can see that this is the central downtown Tokyo. Sorry, uh, this is an, almost in, in the center part of the Japan. And this is Narita Airport, that is the front, front gate of the uh, Tokyo area. And our Tsukuba city is here. So it makes almost a, a regular triangle. And it is actually just one hour trip by train from Tokyo to Tsukuba. So Tsukuba is a very interesting and exciting city. That is a sort of the artificial city. So uh, about 40 years ago, Japanese government decided to concentrate universities and the science and technology institute and also the private companies around this section in just in one city. So we have a total 200,000 of the population in the city today, but out of them, about 5,000 people have the PhD degrees. So it is a really highly concentrated and very sophisticated uh, uh, science and technology city. So uh, this picture shows uh, uh, our center's main building. We have another uh, supercomputer building, two of the supercomputer buildings. And uh, there are about, uh, actually today, maybe 33 of the research faculties working here. And about two thirds of them are application domain scientists. And one, another one third are computation, computer scientists uh, like me. So I'm on the computer science side, or especially for the HPC resource management, procurement, and also their research, of course. And others are including the particle physicists, astrophysicists, material scientists, and the biology and the climate scientists. So uh, before going to the, uh, our, uh, today's my main target uh, system, I, I also like to introduce another system in our center. That is the latest one which was introduced about one and a half years ago, named uh, COMA. So COMA is a strange name, as you know. But um, it is, stands for the uh, cluster of many core architecture. So there, from this naming, you can imagine, it's, you can imagine that this is an uh, Intel Xeon Phi mic or a Knight's Corner based system. Uh, we have about 800 of the Knight's Corners in this system we supported by about 400 nodes. So this is still the number one largest system in Japan based on the uh, Knight's Corner system. And it is ranked at the number 51 in top 500 in last year, June. So their uh, vendor is great. 
And, uh, but this, this system is based, basically supported by the scheduler of SLAM, not the P, uh, PBS Pro. So I will just uh, introduce this one, but uh, skip the machine uh, from the today's and um, my presentation. Okay, the, I'd like to introduce uh, uh, our currently running GPU cluster named HA PAX. So the uh, HA PAX stands for the highly accelerated parallel advanced system for computational sciences. So we are doing the many kind of the computational science problem applications, especially very large scale system. And it consists of in total about 340 nodes and uh, supported by the very dense uh, system architecture of the GPU cluster. And it is an, uh, many uh, design and deployment of the very high density and the high performance GPU cluster in our center and utilized not just by our center's researchers, but also this is uh, under the nationwide program to share the HPC resource in Japan. And this system is also uh, very unique to introduce uh, some very special, our home design uh, network system named tightly coupled accelerators. But today, this, this is not an, uh, directly related to the, your scheduler's job. So I will also skip this part. I just showed a brief uh, couple of slides only. So history of the introduction of HAPAX GPU cluster is like this. So uh, April 2011, the project launched by the governmental support, and February 12, uh, 2012, the first base cluster, base, base cluster part that consists of 268 nodes uh, used, uh, introduced. But at that time, we used uh, uh, Sangrit engine for the scheduler to save the money, mainly. <laughs> But then, on the, uh, about uh, uh, one and a half years later, we extended the system with another 64 nodes with a brand new K20X GPU of the NVIDIA. And at that time, uh, Cray, decided, uh, Cray and uh, we decided to, to change the scheduler to the PBS Pro for more sophisticated operation. And system is still uh, running and, uh, until the May, uh, March uh, 2017. So system vendor is a uh, for, former base cluster is introduced by the APRO Inc. But the APRO was bought to, by Cray, and now the entire system is uh, uh, under, control, under management of the Cray. Well, this is a, a brief chart of the, uh, our system. Excuse me, uh, why the timer is not? Okay. okay. So the uh, brief uh, architecture and uh, uh, specific specification of the HAPAX system. So as I told, it, it consists of two parts. The base cluster system introduced at first, then the TCA system as an extension part. And both system is, uh, has um, some clay green blade series of the church. But um, motherboard is, um, uh, this is Intel part, this is by Intel and this is by Supermicro. So by the, it, this is, the reason is that this part consists of a very special, our home design technology named TCA. So there, uh, we decided to have more stable running our BIOS and everything by the Supermicro is better for our center, our, our machine. So the uh, base cluster part has uh, 268 nodes and uh, or 60, uh, 26 chassis, and it is um, based on the Sandy Bleach uh, CPU by Intel, two sockets and uh, in total 16 cores. On the other hand, TCA part is uh, one and a half year later, so the latest technology at that time was Intel IB Bleach EP with in total 20 cores supported by the two sockets and DDR and uh, for the base cluster, we introduced uh, four uh, NVIDIA M2090. So that this is a very big challenge to input four GPUs into one uh, cluster shash, uh, node, uh, cluster node supported by the two sockets because we utilize almost all the uh, PCI Express links of two sockets of the Xeon, uh, Xeon system to support 64 line, lanes of the Gen 2 technology of the uh, uh, PCI Express to have uh, four of the GPUs. And on the TCA, that's uh, almost the same, but the GPU is upgraded to the K20X, the Kepler architecture. So this is a Fermi architecture, latest Fermi, Fermi architecture. This is the first Kepler architecture. And we have an additional 64 node or 10 chassis for this part. 
And the uh, network is the same. So Melanox, Infi Melanox Infinity Band QDR by two rails that are supported by the uh, enough bandwidth of the uh, uh, PCI Express interconnection. And uh, base cluster has 800 teraflops and uh, additional TCA has 364. So in total, we have 1.3 petaflops of peak performance. But um, uh, thanks to the very good power efficiency of the K20X, so we have about 1.7 times better power efficiency for the uh, peak performance versus uh, power consumption. And uh, the base cluster is ranked as number 41 in the June 2012 of the uh, top 500. So this is just a show the uh, brief architecture of, of the system. So the, the two sockets of the Sandy Bridge or IB Bridge. So this, this picture shows uh, TCA, but then uh, uh, base cluster and TCA has almost the same architecture. So two sockets of the Xeon of the Sandy Bridge or IB Bridge. And uh, there are two GPUs are connected through the 32 lanes of the uh, Gen 2 PCI Express. And on the other hand, also there are uh, two GPUs are connected by the same, in the same way. And uh, InfiniBand QDL uh, dual rail uh, HCA is connected to this chart. On the other hand, on the TCA, so this part doesn't exist on the base cluster. But for the TCA part, we uh, also insert our original card for the TCA network architecture. That actually enables uh, GPU to GPU direct communication over the nodes. So that's a brand new technology, and uh, we are very proud of uh, to uh, provide the users to this feature. But today, I, I don't go inside this part. Well, uh, this is a picture of the uh, base cluster system. The, it has uh, two lanes, and each lane has a 13 of the church. Oh, by the way, so the file system is a 500 terabyte of the shared file system by DDN, Luster, and the D, uh, RAID 6 technology. And this is an inside a shash picture. So here we have two sockets of the Sandy Bridge and one, two, and three, four GPUs in one node. It's very hot, actually. It's very hot. And uh, especially there are two GPUs over, or, uh, placed over the two sockets of the CPU. This part is uh, uh, always a problem to, to have some heat in there. And actually we have some a little bit higher rate of the error of the GPU on this part. But anyway, this is one of the, at that time, world most advanced, most dense uh, GPU cluster node. So this is a picture with the base cluster plus additional uh, TCA part here. So TCA part is uh, relatively loose because uh, we must put another card for the TCA or a tightly coupled accelerators. And this part is um, uh, thanks to the very high performance uh, uh, power efficiency. So uh, this part is ranked, only this part is ranked as the number three of the uh, Green 500 in the 2013 November. So this is a very uh, has a high efficiency of the limpack benchmark and also the uh, relatively low power consumption. So it's ranked as the number three at that time. Well, I'd like to skip the, uh, some uh, explanation about the TCA, but uh, we made an FPGA-based network card to be inserted into the uh, one church and to make the uh, entire uh, 64 GPUs in the one uh, the TCA part are connected by our own technology. So, okay, so the, about the uh, uh, scheduling and uh, operation of the cl GPU cluster. So we have two missions in our center. The first one is, uh, as I told you, so we have a research, uh, research, research group for the advanced computational sciences, including the particle physics, astrophysics, material, climate, and the biology, and the computer sci sciences, HPC technology. As, but uh, we have another mis mission to operate the large a uh, couple of large uh, supercomputers and uh, give the uh, CPU or GPU power resource sharing, shared by the nationwide researchers in Japan. And it is an under control of the government, but uh, we have a, our own uh, operation, our own operation policy and uh, resource sharing of our resource assignment to these scientists. So uh, it, basically, under the support by the government, we have 
we are providing the, uh, the, most of the part as a free, any money. So the scientists just makes an application pro proposal and uh, we judge and the other external uh, judgment committee makes a decision of the how much CPU power or GPU uh, budget is assigned to each project. So every year we have about uh, 40 of the applications and uh, we selected about the 30 of the uh, accepted proposals. And even from the, so this is important. So our, we are operating our clusters, but even from our researchers in our center, we must make a proposal and get a judgment about the, from the external committee. So everything is uh, fair for the, all the nationwide uh, computational sciences researchers. So the, there are two kinds of the, uh, uh, users group in the HA packs according to the program. The mainly, uh, most of the part are, uh, resources are dedicated to this part named, uh, the program named Interdisciplinary Advanced Computational Science. And here, all the projects are assigned some, uh, assigned some amount of the uh, so-called CPU budget. So, for example, uh, uh, we are operating the older program as a node, node by node, not a core by core. So the number of node by the uh, time, running CPU time. So the, for example, uh, 7,000 nodes by hours or something like that. So we call this group as a fixed budget. So in this budget is yearly budget. So from April to the next year's March, this, each group has, can utilize the total fixed budget for each group for one year. On the other hand, uh, there are some, not as a big part, but um, the large scientific, large scale scientific use program. So this is pay the users. So users must pay some money to their other CPU cost, but then uh, they can freely use their fixed size of the node in every month. So this is a monthly program, but then in total we have a uh, schedule of the one year. So uh, here the users who pay the money can use uh, some number of nodes by num number of months. As a, so this is uh, the fixed in every month. So we call this category as a fixed node. Okay, so the fixed bu budget means that the yearly budget in total by the as a meaning of the number of nodes by the hours. On the other hand, a fixed node group has a, every month, for example, one group has a 10 nodes out of the entire system in this month. And next month, they can have about 20 nodes in one month or something like that. So you, you can see, you can imagine that and it is very complicated to mix mixture of these kind of two policies of the uh, application uh, execution and also the, uh, the scheduling. So uh, the problem is that how to, mix, how to mix these two categories of the utilization uh, efficiency and uh, most importantly how to keep the in total very high system availability, system utilization in, in the viewpoint of the manage, system manager. Oh, by the way, so I'm a, de a deputy director and uh, I am also the uh, manager of the operation and the procurement and uh, uh, maintenance, everything about the, our supercomputer resources. So there is an assumption and a solution. So assumption is that, so our customers, our users are relatively uh, easy to control because this is mainly the free system. So they don't pay any money. It's supported by government and our university. So there, uh, we can ask them some of their scheduling policy under our management. And most, most importantly, all jobs always use a GPU. So there is no job mixture. So yesterday, the Satoshi Matsuoka's talk said that their cluster allows a job mix of the CPU only job or GPU only job or together job. But we run the older nodes as a combination of the CPU plus GPU. So all the users must use the GPU. And we are also monitoring at the real time how the GPUs are uh, high, uh, used in the high ratio. So there, there is no job mix. 
And also, since it is a, uh, basically the large scale advanced computational sciences, so there are very few users who use only one node. Most of the users run their, uh, their job in the parallel. So that I mean that in the manner of the MPI plus OpenMP plus CUDA. So MPI for the internal communication, OpenMP for the much core execution, and also CUDA for the GPU execution. And one typical way is that uh, each user, uh, each in each job, in each node, user run the four MPI processes. So four MPI process, processes uh, manage the four GPUs individually. It is relatively uh, difficult to uh, use, control the multiple GPUs in one process. So the easiest way is that the one MPI process per one GPU and running a four MPI process because we have four GPUs on each node. And also users can run the four or five cores to, for each MPI process. That makes a very uh, even uh, and easy to control way of the, uh, our cluster's utilization. And also the long term job is allowed. So up to 24 hours, they can run the single job. So 24 hours is a keyword for the uh, scheduling. So solution to maximize the system utilization is something like that. So we don't make an individual partition for the fixed node project. And, uh, and uh, so I, it means that fixed node projects are basically the paid project. So we must guarantee there are some uh, almost a real time job execution for these fixed node uh, users. For example, one project who, ha who has a right to use the 10 nodes on this month, so they can run the, almost any time. They are up to 10 nodes of the parallel jobs. Uh, so we must guarantee something, not perfectly, I will show later. But on the other hand, if that user doesn't use uh, their uh, assigned resource. The machines is uh, just an idling and uh, we lose uh, 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 machine utilization rate. So, so for the entire management, we like to use a machine 100%. So our decision is that we don't make an uh, individual portion, partition for the, these users. So there are, of course, uh, uh, several queues. But then actually, these queues share the, just one big partition of the entire system. And uh, uh, the, we, mix the, we mix the fixed budget users and fixed node users in the one partition. And fixed node projects are always assigned a very high priority. So they have a very high priority because they are paid, paid users anyway. But also the fair share policy is applied to the fixed budget projects. So fixed budget projects is a modern study in every year. And they, we must control the, their job execution and the management of us. So uh, this is a situation of the actual job execution in our HAPAC system. So fixed node projects sh uh, should wait for resources in some case. So uh, ideally, they can run, they can use their 10 nodes, for example, in any time in that month. But actually, we asked to these fixed node users to wait for a couple, maybe a, some minutes or maybe a couple of hours to be the resource is ready to use for these users. So that is under contract between us and, uh, and uh, uh, these users. So there, that is a very important key because since we don't have a, a individual partition for these users, so these users sometimes must wait for a very short time, not so long time. Uh, but uh, in the worst case, it's up to 24 hours because all the jobs must finish and, uh, uh, in the 24 hours. So uh, uh, sometimes uh, the entire system is occupied by the, some fixed budget users. They have a low priority. But once one job run, we don't have any preemption. So uh, they, uh, the fixed node users sometimes must wait. But the user doesn't make a claim. Most of the jobs are run in just uh, some uh, up to one hour or something in our experience. So there's almost uh, th this is almost okay. And the other one, pro uh, one uh, big solution is that the fair share for the fixed budget project. So there, there are uh, very wide distribution of the users groups 
you know, enthusiasm and also the run job execution uh, steps. So very expert users can run the job from the April 1st. That's the very beginning of the fiscal year. But novice users take some maybe one or two months for launch their jobs. So there are big difference in their uh, utilization of the even for the uh, free users or uh, uh, fixed budget users. So uh, we need to very carefully see that then jump starters who can use a machine always or slow starters who takes a couple of months to launch their job. So in the one category. So okay, so the, this chart just briefly shows uh, the idea of how to, how it works, but uh, not the, not individual partition users for their uh, fixed budget. So uh, theoretically, the machine is partitioned into the two categories: the fixed budget and the fixed node. But actually, we mixture everything. If we still make the, this wall, sometimes uh, uh, the and uh, fixed node users doesn't use the um, system time, so th it is just lost. But in this, ca in, in our case, we, this part is also occupied by the fixed budget users. And uh, honestly saying, total CPU time of the node, fixed node and fixed budget is not 100%. We always make it about 120% because any users lose some CPU time in a year yearly program. So it works well to control the entire system. So we ask fixed users to wait a moment. It has highly improved the system utilization. So for example, this is a chart of last month, August. So uh, I, I, I had hidden all the uh, users groups. There are 30 of the users group, but uh, this slide will be published. So the, uh, for their owner, <laughs> I, I, I hide this part of the each name of the project. But you can see that this is 100% for the yearly budget, yearly uh, fixed budget. So there, it is an uh, ideal to reach the 100% line on the next year's March, that is the end of the fiscal year. But actually, so this is almost a half time, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so the five months passed, about a half of the year. So the five, these five groups are reached is almost 50%. Uh, so they are very good jump starters. While about uh, 14 projects still doesn't use uh, any machine time. So there are, that makes an, uh, that is a reason because we need a fair share uh, works very well. And then uh, uh, on this experience, uh, HPC, uh, H, uh, sorry, PBS Pro is working very well for the controlling the this share, fair share. So that is uh, evidence that uh, why we need the fair share. And on the other hand, for the fixed node, so in this August, we have only two projects of the pay, pay, paid users. It is monthly program. So in this month, we have only two users. So one user group uses almost 99% of the, their resource. So they're, they're very good users. On the other hand, this user group didn't do anything. So the, this is completely free time. And this time is an automatically shared by the fixed budget users in, on, under our policy. So this is another evidence of why the uh, individual partition doesn't work to uh, keep the high machine system availability uh, utilization. OK, so I will, I will finish almost. And this chart shows uh, our history of the system uh, usability and the system uh, utilization ratio. So the green bars shows that how the system is um, available. On sometimes we have um, some uh, drop down, but I will show later. But then, in most, mostly, about we have uh, every month we have uh, 24 hours maintenance of the system. So we lose uh, every time, every month we lose about 3 percent of the CPU time uh, available time. So that's an, uh, not avoidable. But we are running almost 97 or 95 percent of the good system utilization, uh, system availability, and. After the uh, uh, big tuning of the uh, PBS Pro's fair share, and uh, 
finally, we uh, in past five months, we keep almost a ni more than 90 percent of the utilization. So here, the history that uh, on this part, we have a base cluster only, and the Sangrit engine is working here, and we have a relatively low uh, utilization. So that is not good. And I, I think that that is caused by the many of the problem of the scheduler's mistake. On that, and uh, we asked to the SG group, but then, you know, this is a free software, so no one responds to their, or no one is responsible, responsible to reply that. And here we stopped the machine for two months because we increased the number of, of the nodes for the TCA part. And after that, uh, we, our uh, uh, Cray, actually, our, our vendor of Cray made some mistake on their control of the a fair share function of the uh, PBS pool. So the, in this part, also, the, it w didn't work. But finally, in this, uh, in last April, we had a good um, a consultation from the PBS uh, to Altair Japan, and we had a very good um, uh, high ratio of the uh, system utilization so far. So I'm now very happy as a system manager. Okay, so there. After the uh, correction of the fair share setting, so the users' uh, complaints are reducedly, uh, drastically reduced. So finally, I'd like to make some comment about, about the PBS Pro's uh, feature. The first and the basic feature is very good uh, if we correctly set that. So the problem is that, uh, one problem is that, so you, you charge the uh, uh, license fee and also the, all the management feature core by core. But actually, we don't, we don't need a core by core. We only need a node by node. So if the license and the control function, function is working for the node by node manner, maybe it's better for us. And also, the, some options are very complicated. Sometimes it's an inconsistent on the system setting. So there, I like to have a more easy setting of the system. But uh, I, know, I know this is very difficult because our system is very complicated by the mixture of the fixed budget and fixed node users. And uh, several desired features on the scheduler. So there, uh, I need a system consistency check. So this parameter set of the control management of the PBS Pro is perfectly run or not, or some analysis. This option makes some, some bad effect on this set option or something like that. And also, the, I really need a replay feature. So what a replay feature is that? So there, maybe you have or not, I don't know. But the, what I imagine replay is that we like to change the, our parameter set of the scheduler or sometimes we like to change the policy or we like to change the partitioning. So in that case, uh, there are your, the PBS Pro has a perfect log of the job execution. So I like to simulate if something changed on the system parameter, what happens? Is it better or is it worse? So there, uh, I like to know that and what is the best policy to operate the system and almost uh, all the users are, are satisfied and also the, keeps us very high system availability. So that is uh, what I want. So there, I think such kind of replay feature or simulation of the past job execution uh, greatly helps us. Okay, so that's it I have here and the summary is just a summary of my talk. So thank you very much for your attention. Questions? Before I ask mine. <laughs> so I don't know if Ravi's in the audience. I was going to get Ravi to stand up and maybe find, find, um, no. Oh, stand. Okay. So we are, uh, Jim actually said we were working on a simulator and, and Ravi is the engineer working on it. So sit down with Ravi at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I had a question for you actually about power because I noticed that your system, I, 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 you know. Um, you mean power consumption. Power consumption because um, Masuoka san was talking about his limits of power to 0.8 megawatts and it looks like your system is 0.5 megawatts maybe total. Do you have the same problem with power use or do you have a nicer administration? I'm so sorry, say again, please. Do, I mean, do you have the same um, constraints about power use where, you know, during the day you have to, in the summer you have to use less? Oh, yes. Yeah. So that is a very common problem in Japan. 
But fortunately, yeah, there is a hint. So our Tsukuba city is outside of Tokyo. So inside of Tokyo, his, his machine is exactly on the downtown Tokyo. And in the summer, the government policy of control or reduce of power consumption is a little bit different in the inside Tokyo and the other prefecture. So we currently, we don't have a very strong uh, management or control by the government or local government about uh, saving the power even in the summer. But under, you know, four years ago, 2011, after the big tsunami attack and uh, all the reactors down, so there are that, and in that summer, we have to shut down the one machine in every day in the daytime only. So we had about 60 times of the on and off of the system on that, that year. That was terrible. But today, we can almost be uh, uh, fairly running the most of the machine, even in the summer. So that is a uh, big difference between the Taitech and our university. Okay. So I always really enjoy the idea of the, the game theory between users and admins uh, when it comes to scheduling. So I'm curious, how, how happy have your users been with this policy, uh, the fair share and also the, the contract that says you'll wait up to a day to get access to your nodes? So actually, so the paid users, uh, in the most of the case, paid users doesn't wait for 24 hours for resources. And in, uh, I, don't, I don't have a chart, but then in our uh, statistics, it's just one or two hours for waiting for the older uh, paid users, even for the paid users. And also, uh, I didn't talk, but uh, very experienced uh, paid users, that they keep the 99% of the utilization. The, the secret is that they charge, uh, they uh, submit many jobs in the queue. So always uh, their, their next job is waiting. So in that case, scheduler automatically assign the perfect node to their job because um, they have a very high priority. So there are, uh, if the paid users put um, much of the jobs in the queue, there is no problem actually. Other questions? Someone has to stand up. Okay, thank you again. Thank you, thank you very much.